There's Miss Colleen. Oh, oh je vais bien, je vais bien, madame. Oh, hey, Ray, how are you? Hello. Oh, <laughs> très bien, très bien. Wonderful. All right. Good to see you guys. I know. Well, welcome to the classroom. As you see, we've got a few people here in the classroom. This is going to be the new hybrid style that we're working on. So today is a is a good test. As you see, Brian's up there adjusting our camera so we can make sure to see everybody. Yeah, this is just a test. You probably can't tell, but Brian's actually on a ladder, shaking it as you. So this is officially our big uh, opening of our hybrid classroom. Yeah, there's still going to be one spot. I don't know. This will be. That's still visible, right? Yeah, we're still visible here. Awesome. Nice job, Brian. Yay. Good job, Brian. Brian on the ladder. Katrina, good to see you. Brian, on the good I'm to see you. you. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to the new hybrid class. Today, we have our two instructors, Colleen DeLang and Taylor Fidua. We are here working on our new hybrid class. We have people in here. We know that everybody, a lot of people do like to learn when they are in a classroom hands-on. So they can say, hey, what about this? And, and we get that. And we also know that not all of us like to travel down here because we have members across the state, which makes this even more accessible for all of our members to, to join, whether they're uh, at our vendored MLSs or our MLS, either way. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce Colleen and Taylor today. We thank you very much for being our instructors and getting down here and getting together today. All right. It's exciting. So yeah, the big the oh, big like day. <laughs> the big day we've been waiting for finally getting our hybrid classroom open. So uh, as Debbie mentioned, my name is Colleen DeLang. I have been a realtor myself now for God, 23 years. So yes, I got licensed when I was one. I know. <laughs> um, but actually, really, my goal today is to take you through some time-saving tips on making CMAs easy. Um, I think in my 23 years, I've used seven different CMA programs, and um, some of them were really labor intensive. Some were easy to use, but they didn't give that wow factor when you're sitting with a seller. So I wanted the best of both worlds. I wanted something that was easy to use, um, and I wanted something that really wowed the seller. And we're also going to show you some brand new things today in Cloud Live. Um, they recently just made some enhancements that allow you to use an interactive map. So Ray, because I know you well, I'm going to use you. Uh, Ray is uh, going on a listing appointment tonight, and Ray's uh, seller says, well, what about Joe's house on the corner? He closed yesterday and Ray was all prepared three days ago for his appointment. How do you pull up Joe's house and say, well, actually, Joe is a ranch and you're a split level or maybe that's why you didn't choose it. Or how do you see what that square footage is? Or how do you pull that comp in live while you're sitting there? Well, that's actually been done for you. They've also calculated a lot of things, like if there's more square footage, if there's an additional bedroom, an additional bathroom, if it's a larger lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's got a lot of new calculations that it's actually plugging in for you, making our job even easier. Um, some of the other things that I really like is you can also present it uh, via live stream, kind of like we're doing right now. So if you've got a seller who who maybe lives in another state or is on vacation and you want to present your CMA, you can actually do that. So I'm going to take you through all of that. I'm actually going to show you how to do those things step by step. But the thing about me is I kind of like to teach this class backwards. And, and uh, so far, Dave hasn't fired me yet for doing so. So I'm going to actually show you the finished product. So I'm going to show you what the CMA looks like. And then I'm going to go back. And once you see it and you like it, and you say, yep, that's for me. I'm going to show you step by step exactly how we got there. So if you will humor me for just a moment uh, at this point, and because this is our very first uh, classroom experience, I do want to make sure that you're able to see my screen. You should be able to see uh, the comparative market analysis right in front of you. Um, matter of fact, does everybody see that on their screen in here just to make sure? Taylor, do you kind of see that on mm -hmm. yours? All right, yeah. perfect. So again, I'm going to kind of walk you through this step by step um, at the end, but I kind of wanted you to see the overall finished product first. Um, so one, you can be as detailed as you want using Cloud CMA. Now, for me, when I'm going to go on a CMA appointment, I want to have the BSNA record. I want to have my realist information in there. I want to have all the property information. 
Um, I want to also put, you know, my marketing plan in there. So you can add custom pages. And that's really what sets everybody's CMA apart from each other, because we all have cloud CMA, right? So the difference between mine and someone else's is really the custom pages that I'm adding to make it unique. Um, when you are using cloud, there's different ways that you can present it. I'm just going to go through the quick and easy um, PDF version right here, and then we're going to talk more about the live version. But basically, it's four tabs to create a CMA. And for me, it actually takes on average between seven and nine minutes to do a complete CMA. Now, of course, there's times I do want to add additional pieces. It may take, you know, a minute more or two minutes more. But really, once you've established your template in cloud, it's super Super easy and it's always set up for you so when you're doing your next CMA the time is very minimal the hardest part is really just coming up with the comps and paragons so kind of walking through my CMA one of the things that you want to do is you can even go to your company website or your website and you can simply copy and paste that information right into your cloud template they have some great pre-written marketing pages, like you can see here, what is the CMA, but you can choose whether or not you want to use those pre-written pages. Um, this was one thing, you know, it seemed like every time I went on a listing appointment, I always got the same question. It was, well, Colleen, are you going to put my home on Zillow? Are you going to advertise my home online? Where's my home? So instead of having to answer that question after the fact every single time, I decided to create this page which says, well, my broker is actually going to syndicate out to 400 different sites. And these are the top ones that you're going to, because these are the common ones they ask about. So this was a page that I made. I just inserted it. So in my time, template, I don't even have to think about it. It's the fifth page of my CMA, and I can address that objection right before we even get started. As I mentioned, I'm going to try to blow this up a little bit here, just so you can see it a little bit easier. So hopefully that looks a little, is that a little larger on your screens? Ho you. Hopefully I'm trying to learn our around our new hybrid classroom just to make it a little easier. But other pages um, that I want to add is I want to make sure I'm adding things like the BSNA record. Because if I'm sitting with a seller and they say, well, Colleen, where did you get that square footage? We think we have more square footage. I want to be able to see where those details came from. And the good news is if you are a My Real Source member, the one of the member benefits that you get that sets us apart is that you actually get BSNA in gross point, in any of the five gross points, Macomb County and Genesee County, when you use our easy links to go into the BSNA record, it actually gives you those property records and we actually take care of that for you as a My Real Source benefit. So again, one of your perks of being a My Real Source member is when a lot of times when you click that button and you go into the property record, if the municipality charges a two or three dollar fee, you just have to get out your credit card and pay that fee. Well, the good news is because you're a My Real Source member, again, if it's in any of the five gross points, if it's in Macomb County, if it's in Genesee, we actually take care of those costs for you if the municipality. Oh, and St. Clair County. Sorry, Debbie reminded me. St. Clair County, that's new too. So thank you. Um, so remember that if you, but you do want to go through the easy button because that does make it even simpler to, uh, so I'm just going to jump down to the next page. But another thing you want to also make sure you're pulling in is the tax information from BSNA. I just uh, literally had a client who had $7,000 worth of unpaid property taxes with the, with the city of Clinton Township. And so when we were sitting, going through her CMA, I included um, those unpaid taxes from the BSNA record because I wanted to address that question. And sure enough, her mother had passed away. She now owned the condo, but she never homesteaded it. So it was a chance for us to actually have that conversation together. We then went down to the city and the city actually rebated her a good amount of those taxes. So she didn't owe that much at closing. So those are all conversations that you can have just by simply remembering to pull in those BSNA records. Also, so a lot of- Colleen, Colleen, can I ask a question? Yes. So if I want to put that, say it's a three page report from BSNA and I want to put it in my CMA. Do I have to save it as a PDF and then put it in to Cloud CMA? You do. And actually, we're going to walk through that today. 
Um, we're going to actually go in and add custom pages to cloud just like that. We're actually going to use that exact example. And yes, when you're looking at that property record in BSNA or in Realist, or uh, you know, maybe you have a floor plan that you want to include, something like that that you found, you can actually just save it to a PDF and then you can simple, simply upload it into Cloud CMA under custom pages. But I'll walk you through that process so you can okay, actually Thank see. you. Good. And it was our first question. And by the way, I probably should have started off with that. If you have questions today, um, even though you may be joining us uh, via webinar, we want your questions. So you have a couple different options, but you can simply unmute your microphone and ask a question just like if you're here in the group. Okay. All right. So Dave, thanks for reminding. I have a feeling that's probably why he asked that question. All right. So the next thing that you can do, and they've actually just enhanced this too, and I'm kind of excited about it. I'm just starting to play around with it. Um, you can, of course, put your contact information in. You can put your resume in. You could always do that. But with the new live version, you can also add a video resume. So I just did it with my cell phone. I'm getting ready to um, upload. I just wanted to edit it a little bit, but literally a uh, quick video in front of the sign, shaking hands uh, with my buyer who just purchased the home, just talking a little bit about my home services and what I offer. In your new live cloud version, you can do these video, we call them kind of like a video testimonial, if you will, that's going to allow you to talk a little bit about yourself and your services. So instead of it just being a flat paper resume, you now can have a little movie 30 40 second montage of what you do that sets you apart from your competition um, i've got a couple more people who just bumped in you know what debbie if you could maybe keep an eye on that that would be helpful just so i don't miss anybody i i'm gonna um update these people to panelists real quick just so they have um the ability to join in but if i miss anybody you might have to you might have to catch me up okay so next is how do you want your comps displayed? So for me, I like to include all of the pictures, but obviously if you're gonna print your entire CMA, you may not want to print you know, 60 pictures if they have 60 pictures in the MLS, right? So I'm just gonna kind of bring that down so you can see it. Um, when you're including the comps, you can choose from several different layouts for your comps. So as you can see, it's pulling up a map of where the comps are gonna be located. It's giving a price of the comparables, but you can choose to take that out. And I will tell you a good example of that uh, happened to me. I was listing a house in Sterling Heights. It was the cutest little red brick house from the outside. Like every brick was perfect. The shutters were perfectly painted. The flowers were all in a straight row. It was an adorable little house. So I thought I'm going to one step this listing. No problem. I literally stepped into the home into about seven inch blue shag carpeting i kid you not like you know the kind you go wow that's really that's that's haven't seen that in a while but then uh in the in most of the rooms she also had those big stick on orange wallflowers remember from the brady bunch i don't know if, if anybody knows what i'm talking about and they say it's coming back but it ain't ever coming that far back i i assure you but now i had a situation because i literally had my report printed out right and i had it priced as an average comp until i I saw uh, the home inside and now I'm realizing mm, we're going to need some serious updating. So here's me back then. I'm in the bathroom trying to rip out my suggested list price page, right? Because I don't want them to list at that price. <laughs> I know. Um, so what this allows you to do is you can show all of the comps, all of the interior photos. But remember, when you're using cloud, you can also update it even at the time of the appointment. So remember how I said you not only can pull in from a live interactive MLS map, but you can also make edits to your suggested list price. And the reason I bring that up is if you know that all the comps point to, and we'll use this example, all the comps point to um, a suggested list price of maybe 260, but you know that this one needs a little more updating. You have the choice to remove this particular page and put in your own suggested list price. Um, so that can be very helpful if you've got a home that maybe needs a little more updating. So when you're talking about the comps themselves, there's several different templates that will lay out how you want the comps to appear. Um, I sort of like the photo with map. There's photo with map and photo with max data. This is the photo with max data layout. And I'm going to show you those options in just a moment. But I like it because it's very clean and easy for the seller to read. Also, it allows me to have all of those photos in there. So if uh, Josh McGeggy, our seller, says, well, 
Uh, did Mr. Namowski on the corner, did he have a finished basement? Well, I maybe haven't seen Mr. Namowski's house, but I can still go in, I can go through all of the photos and I can address that question because I have all these interior photos. Obviously, if you're gonna print it, you probably don't wanna include all the interior photos because remember, you can add up to 99 photos. Um, so it's just how you're going to be presenting it, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of fly through a few of these comps. So again, a lot of times you'll find floor plans in there um, and go down to the end here. Another thing is they have a lot of pre-written marketing pieces that you can choose. So whether you're new to the business or um, you know whether you're a seasoned veteran, there are, I promise you, you'll find some really good pieces that you can use. Um, you can also choose if you wanted to like break down like price per square foot, um, I kind of like this one. A lot of times, especially if it's a first time seller, you know, you're netting them out and all of a sudden their eyes get huge when it comes to the commission and they think, oh my gosh, you must make more money than anyone in history. They generally don't understand how commission is uh, distributed between the different parties. So this is kind of a nice little overall that talks about that, you know, there's a listing agent and there's a buyer's agent. Um, that we both have brokers and it sort of helps address those commission objections as well. So I like how easy it is. I like how clean um, it looks. I think it's very easy um, for sellers today to understand. Um, and really cloud does most of that. Now, cloud CMA not only does CMAs, but you can do um, property tours, you can do flyers. They have a really cool lead generation tool that I'm gonna show you in just a couple of minutes. So it actually has a lot of robust pieces to it. Um, but if you're interested in using Cloud CMA, the first thing you have to know is, well, how do you get the comps to build your CMA report? And that's really in Paragon. The nice thing is, if you just do a search in Paragon and you hit the easy button, the rest of that is going to fall into place for you. So we're going to actually do it step by step. But if you do have any questions today, again, just jump right in there. And Debbie, if you kind of watch the question there is a questions box also in go to webinar so if you're not quite comfortable or maybe you don't have i know there's one person without a mic um, if you don't have a mic set up you're more than welcome to go into your go to webinar panel there's a little questions box and you can type your question too and i know uh, debbie's going to keep an eye and just make sure if those questions come and they get answered right away for you all right so basically when you're going on your listing appointment the most important thing that you want to do is you want to always start with your homework so the first thing I want to do is if I just got a call to go and list or a listing appointment for, we'll use 4041539 Wessel Drive. I'm going to start typing that in because really where I want to start is I want to see, has this property um, ever been listed before? Has it recently sold? Really, that's kind of where you're going to want to start doing your homework. And now I can start getting some property information. If I scroll down uh, to here, this is where we're going to see the quick action links, like Brian has a technical name for them, but I call them easy buttons, quite honestly, because I'm not as technical as he is. So the easy buttons are really designed to take you into different programs without having to stop what you're doing, log into another program, type in an address, try to find the property. Really, they are set up to be easy buttons. So if I am looking for the BSNA record for this property, the easy button, as I mentioned, and I have to apologize, it looks a little like a trash can. Um, it's supposed to be a government pillar, but when Brian smushed down the government pillar, I think it looks more like a trash can personally. He says he's gonna fix it, but it's supposed to be an elongated government pillar. I think it looks a little like a trash can. But when you hover your mouse over it, you're gonna see that it says um, BSNA. That's really where you want to click to start pulling in that property information because BSNA is really your trusted link. It's the link that you want to go to if there's ever a legal um, issue. BSNA is the one that a court of law is going to use. It's the one that they're going to check. So when you click on that um, uh, government pillar, it's going to, instead of having you leave Paragon, go into the tax records, try to find the municipality, try to find uh, the actual address, wait for that to load, and then put in your credit card. Remember, we're doing a lot of that for you. We're actually paying it in uh, St. Clair, Genesee, Macomb County, any of the gross points. And then what's going to happen is it's going to open up that property record, just as you see here. 
So Dave brought up a really good point. Well, how do you get it out of here and how do you get it into cloud? So once I've pulled that up, I'm going to go over here to the print button right over here to the right. And your go to webinar box may be covering this. I apologize if it is it's in the far right hand corner, but it will say print. You just want to print that, maybe save it to your desktop. I usually just print it as a PDF. So that when I am looking to quickly pull all this together, I have it in one nice, easy to find folder, usually right on my desktop. So I'm just gonna click desktop here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. Now I have that record. Now I like to do that for the tax information. I like to do that for the property information. And as a matter of fact, I just um, listed a house not that long ago in Warren, and there was a $700 outstanding water bill. Now, that's not a huge deal to some people, but if the house is worth 45000 and you got to tell them, hey, you got a $700 water bill that needs to be addressed, that's going to cut them to their bottom line at the closing table. So those are all things I want to have saved in my CMA so we can address them right at the time of the listing appointment. So what I do, and if you haven't been in BSNA, this is kind of what it looks like. You can scroll down. You can see uh, at the top, you can see how many bedrooms, when it was built how many baths, what the square footage is, scroll down and see if permits were pulled, you can see the sales history, you can see that this is actually on a garage, it does have a, a basement. So I'm getting all of the facts I actually need to do my CMA, right? I'm getting all the details so I can find the appropriate accounts. So I print each one of these tabs as a PDF so that I now can pull them in. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, the next thing I wanna do though is every once in a while, you'll find that there is a discrepancy. Um, and what I mean by that is if you go into Realist, sometimes you will find um, that the tax information says one thing, but it's something different in the MLS. For a long time, I didn't understand really what that meant, but basically I listed a house in Sterling Heights that in the MLS, it was listed as two stories. However, in the tenants records, it said it was one story. So if I see that there's a discrepancy, and a lot of times those are highlighted in Realist because it shows MLS versus tax, I know it's a question that I want to ask when I'm sitting with that seller. And in this case, it was really good because he owned a dormer company. He literally put a, it wasn't really a full story, but he put like a little sunroom on top of the home, but he never pulled a permit. So that was something we could address by seeing that there were some differences there. So when you're looking for realist, or again, property information, realist again is a combined source. It's pulling some from the MLS and some from the municipality, which is why usually uh, a judge will use BSNA as the trusted source because it's only one source, it's not a combined source, right? So, but if I'm looking for that realist record, I'm gonna click on that red button, and again, that's now going to take me into where I can start seeing even more information that I want to print to a PDF and pull into my CMA. So as I scroll down, I can see it last sold um, actually in May of this year. I can see where the selling price was. And I also like if you check down here, a lot of times you'll find that the home has been in foreclosure or if they refied. Now, why I think this is a really important thing and why I always pull this is we're starting to see a few more people who are taking money out of their home. They're doing a little refi, sometimes needing a little bit of cushion. You can a lot of times see when they refied, um, and you, if you're walking into a listing appointment and you see they just refied last month, you know, and they took up a lot of money out of the home, you may have to ask, you know, are they going to be upside down in that home? So these are all things that I'm actually learning right from the homework I'm doing within the tax center. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so again, I would save this, um, print this as a PDF so that you can have this, you can pull this in. I'm gonna show you exactly how to pull all these documents in at the end. And then I also like to also print the listing ticket from when they purchased it, because that will kind of show, um, especially if there's been a couple purchases or if it's been a flip, I like to have all of those in there. So I can one, show up, I did my homework. Um, and two, I can actually see when they closed, if there were concessions, how they purchased it, um, and I can see all of that detail. So again, I like to print that so I have it. All right, so now we've gathered how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what's the square footage, does it have a garage, is it attached? We're, we're getting all this information together to start finding the right comps. To find the right comps, 
we are just going to do a search in Paragon. So I'm going to go to my second tab here, which says search. And I'm obviously, if I'm, you know, listing vacant land, I'm going to look for vacant land comparables. In this case, we're going to go nice and easy. We're just going to use search by residential or single family. So really the goal right now is to figure out what that homeowner should list for and what that homeowner is probably going to close for. So as I scroll through, I'm just answering some basic information like single family or condo. You don't know what goes in a particular field. Remember, you can always click on the magnifying glass to the right and it's gonna show you what that particular field is uh, asking for because we're always adding new fields and new features. If you ever have a question, you can always go to that magnifying glass. So the rule of thumb is when you're doing a CNA, obviously the most important thing is the closed numbers. We need to know what they closed for. However, I'm kind of an old Floyd Whitman fan. I don't know if anybody even remembers who Floyd is. I just, uh, I grew up with his Sweat Hogs class and I just thought he was fantastic. He was such a good speaker, but he always like telling me, if you're gonna take somebody's time, you better know what's active and what's pending right around them too, because they do and they wanna know you do it. So I've always gotten in the habit to always not only add closed, but all actives and pendings. Now, right now, it's been such a strong uh, market for sellers. Really, you know, we haven't seen so many needs to have expireds in our CMA. But if the market turns, as I think we may see, um, you may even at some point want to consider if you have a homeowner, let's say a seller that says to you, you know, Colleen, I know you say our home is uh, probably around 300, but we want to list for 400 and take a shot and just see if it works. Those are times you may even want to consider adding one overpriced expire. Um, maybe one that's been on the market for 350 days and has had five price changes. You know those kind. So when they suggest really overpricing their home, you can say, well, I know you feel like that, but Mr. Schmageggy on the corner, he also felt like that. And look how long he's been listed and look how many price changes he's had. So those are all um, kind of little tips that you can put in your CMA if you come up against a seller who maybe wants to overprice their home. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't really love the MLS calendars. So actually clicking and then clicking six months back, that's too much work. So you can go right over to the date range here. When you click on that date range, I just obviously want to find clothes from the last six months because an appraiser in this area, that's what he's going to do. I also want to change it from sale to rent because I really only just want to tell them what they're going to sell their home for here. But I'm going to bypass a lot of these fields. And the reason is, I want to do pretty much what an appraiser is going to do in this area. And I know everybody right about now says, oh, does that really matter? You know, Colleen, uh, things are selling for over appraised value, but you still need to know what it's going to appraise for. Because if you get that offer and it's 300,000, but it only appraises for 250, somebody's got to make up that difference, right? So you still want to think like an appraiser. You want to come up with comps like an appraiser is going to do. So you can basically have all the proof you need that the home is going to sell for uh, that amount. All right, so I want to also add in some more basics like structure style. Um, if this home, this home happens to be a uh, one bedroom or a brick ranch, so I'm going to do a one story home, happens to have three bedrooms, not a whole lot on the market over there right now, and I might want to try to get a couple pendings inactive, so I'm going to do three to four on the bedrooms. But obviously, the goal is really just to have it as close as you possibly can be. You want to really compare apples to apples whenever possible. So this has one and a half bathrooms, so I'm going to do one to two. You could actually use the half uh, and full baths and be even more specific. I'm just going to use the total bathroom fields because I think that's going to work in our example today. Does it have a basement? Yes. Now, a lot of people start getting into features when you're doing a CMA. In our market right now, I would kind of caution you about adding too many features like finished basement, things like that, because there's not a lot on the market and you want to make sure you're getting your seller the most amount possible. So if you're picking only show me things that are comps with finished basements, you might be really losing it. And the agent um, may not have selected that particular feature because remember features are optional they're not mandatory so i would kind of stay away from using additional features when you're doing a cma all right so scrolling down does it have a garage yes no again you could do attached or detached if you wanted to if you wanted to be a little bit more specific to value 
Scrolling on down from here though, then we get into square footage. So I know we have a couple new people on the call and I think the question I always get here is, well, what, what do you do for square footage? If, you, if you're trying to find a comparable square footage, what is comparable? Well, um, all the appraisers I've ever talked to, and now sometimes, let me just caveat this first, sometimes if you're working in a rural area, you have to kind of make the circle a little bigger. What I mean is I'm gonna give you the specifics that you're generally gonna use in most areas, but if you're somewhere north and you're doing maybe more in a, in a really rural area and there isn't a whole lot of comps, you may not be able to stay in one mile. You may have to go to three miles. Um, you may not be able to put in structure style and find exactly what you're looking for. So sometimes you have to play with these. I always say start with the basics and you can always open it up if you're not getting any results. Um, so square footage works like this. Appraisers generally use a 20% square footage rule. So in this case, when we started doing our homework and we went into the property information, it was 1,361 square feet. So really what we're doing is we're taking 20% of that and we're minusing it off. So 20% minus that off the 1361. Then we're taking 20% and we're adding it on top of that 1361. So if you have a calculator in front of you, you're better than I am, but I'm just gonna give you a pretty rough uh, estimate. So our square footage rule is going to be 20%. So it'll be around 1150 to 1550 in our example today. So that 20% square footage rule is generally what most appraisers tell me. And I've asked for many years, they all stick to that 20%, except for sometimes in those rural areas where you do have to open it up a little bit more. Now you're probably thinking, okay, lady with the fuzzy hair, you have got 8,000 comps, you're gonna be there forever. Well, we haven't put in the most important thing, right? It's location, location, location. But I just don't wanna pick a city, right? I want to do what an appraiser is going to do. I want to stay within one mile of that subject property. So how do you do that? How do you do that like an appraiser would do it? And the answer is you're going to go right into this search by map. Okay, so I'm going to click into that search by map field. And generally what happens is when you do search by map, it always opens up to your office location. So where my X is would be my office location. Um, and so it's it's automatically taking you there because that's what we know about you at the MLS. But you may, you can set a default if you want it to be, maybe you work out of your home more and you sell more by your home, you can actually set different defaults in Paragon too. But where I wanna draw your attention to is right up here in this field. This field is where you can actually type your listing appointment address and now hone in on the area. The reason I say to do that is, and some people like to use the map with their fingertips, which of course you can do. I think I kind of have, I don't know, thick fingers or something, because when I do that, all of a sudden I start seeing, you know, the continents and I'm like, I'm trying to backspace and it doesn't work. So I just like to actually go right up to the field and I like to type in my listing appointment address. So I'm going to type in 41539 Wessel comma now this kind of works this uses google maps and it kind of works like google's the less you put in the better your results are going to be and what i mean by that is if it's wessel this happens to be wessel drive or wessel court or wessel boulevard leave off the drives the ways the places because a lot of times if you're abbreviating them or you're spelling them out and they are it doesn't find them so kind of think of it like less is best you wanna put in just the root street name, like 41539 Wessel, comma, then what the city is going to be. So I'm gonna do uh, comma Sterling Heights. This is a two-step process, and sometimes people get a little tripped up. You wanna put the address in, and then you wanna hit the magnifying glass first. And the reason is it will recenter your map for you. So now, right here, where this subject flag is, that's my listing appointment. That's my subject property where I'm trying to find my comps. So what I wanna do now is I wanna do what an appraiser is gonna do in this area. He's gonna look within one mile. So I'm gonna go up to where it says search radius. I'm going to now search within one mile. And I'm gonna back this out a little so you can see what just happened. But basically, I now have put a one mile ring around my subject property so I can start seeing those comps. The next question I always get right here is, well, what are these little numbers here in these circles? Those numbers are basically where the flags are very close. They could be on top of each other. Maybe they're very close on your map and they're hard to click on when they get too close. So if you zoom in 
you'll notice it starts to break those flags apart and I can click on them individually. If I kind of want to see what that particular comp looks like, I can just click on the flag and over here to the left, it's going to show me what that closed comp or pending comp looks like. All right. So let's say for one moment that you did this and I've got a few comps here, so we're looking good. But let's say you did it. It's a little more rule where you are and you're kind of thinking, well, I didn't get any comps, you know, and, and you, you said, yeah, I got all the, the criteria in there, but I still don't have anything. You can always go to this edit button over here to the left and you can click in your shape. So I can click in this bar and sometimes you have to drag your circle open a little bit. That will give me an, a little additional room to try and find a comp. So maybe I couldn't find it uh, within one mile. Maybe I had to go one and a quarter. Now you could type in 1.25 uh, and do one and a quarter that way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you just lost the screen. Uh-oh. That's me. Okay. <laughs> I own it. Can you bump her down to a panelist quickly? Can and you make, make me the uh, presenter again? Colleen, organizer, and presenter. Panelist, presenter. Very just a little nuance. A little nuance. But a the... big, big deal there. Okay, we're back. All right, we're back. Okay. Okay, Debbie, don't push that button again, right? Okay, Debbie, don't okay. push the button again. <laughs> okay. All right. So we open this up, oh, and uh, it's just that kind of day, you know? Yeah. It's just it's how it goes. Yeah. All right. So we opened it up. So now we're able to, um, instead of just looking within the one mile, we can open it up to maybe one, one and a quarter miles. But here's something I didn't know, and I have to give all the credit to Lisa Harris, who uh, is just one of my all-time best friends. She's an amazing trainer with us, too. She's been doing real estate even longer than I have. Um, but she said, you know, Colleen, every once in a while, you get in a situation and, you know, you, you've got your map, and maybe you're looking in a, even in a bigger area. And we're going to use Ray, my friend, because I haven't seen you in a long time, and it's nice to see you again. Um, we're going to say that Ray just went out and he listed uh, $2 million waterfront listings uh, this month. So great job, Ray. And that's really great for Ray. But I got this little brick ranch that's off the water. But I'm bringing all if I do the circle, we're going to pretend that this Clinton River is a lakefront and that uh, Ray's got these two fancy listings over here. We're going to pretend they're not 300,000, but 3 million, whatever it happens to be. But I don't want to drag in all of those million dollar waterfront properties into my CMA because guess what it's going to do? Radically screw up my numbers, right? It's not going to be right at all. So there's also ways when you are looking at your radius and you're saying, I want to stay within that one mile, sometimes you have those exceptions. So let's talk about that exception. So we're going to say our little brick ranch sits off the water, but I'm drawing my one mile circle, which includes raised million dollar waterfront listings. So what do I want to do? I really want to hit the draw button. And I want to say, you know what, as excited as I am for Ray, and I know he'll sell them very quickly, I just want to exclude that waterfront area. So I, even though I'm looking in my one mile radius, I'm going to literally click, I'm going to basically draw a shape on my shape. Now, I did not know you could do this for the longest time. My friend Lisa Harris says, oh, yeah, just let me show you how to do it. So now we've got a shape on a shape. All we have to do is click the little blue check mark over here. And we can, instead of including raised million dollar waterfront homes, we've now excluded that waterfront area. So we don't have a bunch of comps. Now we got to go deselect 20 comps because we didn't want anything on the water. This is a really easy way to remove an area, not only for waterfront, but um, like I'm thinking of Rivergate. Rivergate has a sub where half of the sub is more newer construction and half of the sub is older construction. So if I have a newer construction home I'm trying to find numbers for, I don't want the 1930s brick ranch numbers messing up my new construction number. So sometimes it's a way to literally draw and exclude an area, either in a subdivision or maybe waterfront, so that you're getting more accurate comps. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So I can start see I've got my, my comps are starting to populate right on uh, my map here. There's a couple other really cool little uh, tips here. So now I can see um, here is my one mile radius. I've excluded that area, but um, you can also use some of the tools to kind of highlight things when you're looking at your map. Um, for instance, 
let's say that you are listing a house. Let's say Ray's going on his listing appointment tonight and it's two hours away. Now, Ray does not want to have to drive two hours, go look at the neighborhood. He just kind of wants to see what does the neighborhood look like before I get there? So he can also go right over to this little yellow Google man and you can literally drag that little Google man right onto your map. So if I want to see what the neighborhood looks like without having to, to drive all the way over there, this is an easy way for me to tour the neighborhood right from my computer. And by the way, if you haven't taken Debbie's awesome uh, Collab Center class, um, the, in the Collab Center, your clients can do this too. So they can actually see the neighborhoods of the listings that are being sent to them. Um, they can mark things as favorites. They can do all of that. But in this case, I just kind of want to tour the neighborhood, want to see is it mostly brick ranches? I mean, um, you know, is the neighborhood, um, is there a lot in the neighborhood? Are they larger lots? But this is a way for me literally to walk down the street. Now, why I like this and the reason I'm showing you this um, is this is our subject property right here. You can see the pin is actually telling us that this is our subject property. And by the way, that house I told you about with the dormer that didn't pull the permit, that's this house right here. <laughs> Um, so good example. So it literally allows you to walk down the street um, and check out the neighborhood without having to uh, actually leave. Also, Brian has enhanced our mapping ability in Paragon. Um, so you actually can have up to 10 shapes on a map. Now, I wouldn't do that for our example of a CMA, but it's really handy if you have a buyer looking in multiple areas. Um, so maybe you have a buyer who says, you know what, Colleen? I really, really like um, that area north of Garfield, um, but I want to stay west of Romeo Plank. So you can literally click and draw shapes. Maybe his mother-in-law lives over here and he's not a big fan, so he wants to sort of stay on this side of the track. So it allows you to literally draw. So you start and stop your shapes exactly as you want them to be. So really helpful, not so much on the CMA side, but really when you're working with buyers. If you ever make a mistake, you can always go right back to edit you can click on the X and you can always start again. So you can remove anything that you don't want to be there. Couple of uh, enhancements have recently been added. And one I'm really kind of excited about, especially if you do more waterfront or you're working maybe more in Harrison Township or Ira or a lot of those uh, waterfront areas. If you go to the legends, it's kind of like these three little um, layers here, if you will. Um, if you click on that, you can do a lot more with the maps now. For instance, floodplains. Maybe you're working with a buyer and they don't want to have to pay flood insurance. And you want to see, is this a, an area that commonly floods? Would I need flood insurance? You can actually apply things like the floodplain maps. So when you're using the floodplain map, if I just zoom in, you can see it's now outlining the areas that I may be required to have flood insurance. Now, I always tell my buyers, this is not a survey, this is not a cert elevation cert, this is just giving you a kind of a visual indication, this is a question you need to ask. Um, you can also add things um, like parcel lines. Maybe you want to see how big the uh, parcels are in the neighborhood you're getting ready to list the home in. So you can add in parcel lines and you can literally click even if it's not listed. It's going to actually show you the property over here to the left. And again, by zooming in, you can get even more information. You can even see the parcel lines um, and the perimeter line, and you can click into any of them, even if they're not listed, which I love. And it will actually give you the details of the lot sizes. All right, so a few more things that we've added. We've also added um, bus routes, things like that. So a lot more of those. All right, so it looks like we may have a question. Oh, looks like they answered it themselves. Okay. Okay. So once we've got our criteria, so let's say you're on your map and you're like, you know what? Okay, I've got my criteria in. I've got my circle drawn. I've got my radius all set up. I can see the comps are here. One of the things that Paragon did uh, about two years ago that I really liked is if you forgot to add something, if you got all the way to this step and you forgot to, let's say, take out leases, I've had that happen, and you're like, oh, man, I got all these comps. Oh, a lot of them are leases. You can always go back to these three tabs here at the top. I can always go back to my criteria tab right here, and I can add in anything that I forgot. So you have your map search. You can always jump back to your map. You can make it larger or smaller. But if you forgot something, um, no worries. You can go ahead and 
If you need to modify something on your criteria tab, not only can you remove it from your list, but you can see everything that you've added and you can make a modification if you've made a mistake. All right, so I am gonna go ahead, I'm gonna search this, I've got 16 comps. So I am gonna go ahead and pull those open. Now, really, if we had more time, um, I would put even more criteria in to dwindle these down. You're really searching for between three and five sold comps. That's really your goal. Now, I'm gonna be honest, there are some times that you have 10 comps and they're all really good comps. There are sometimes you have one and that's all you can find and you've gone you know, as far as you can go. So sometimes you do have to play, again, if you're, especially if you're in a rural area, sometimes you do have to kind of expand uh, the perimeter. I would want to go in, I would probably in this case, because I have a few more comps than I normally would use, I would add things like that it's an attached garage. That's going to filter it down. That's going to give me less results. But in this case, because of time, I want to show you a couple quick ways to sort here. When you open up your um, results, your search results, right up here at the top, kind of giving you a mini breakdown or a mini CMA, if you will. So it's telling me what my list price average is, what my sold price average is, but that's for everything. Now, this is really where my OCD kind of kicks in. I have a little OCD and I kind of like everything. Like if you went to my house, my towel closet, every towel is the same color, folded the same way in a nice little perfect row. I kind of like my results to be that way too. So what I like to do is I always want my, <laughs> I'm doing Debbie's closet next. Um, I like to actually sort the statuses. So if you click on status, I like to see how many actives I'm working with how many clothes I'm working with, how many pendings. Now, obviously, if I had a little more time, I would dwindle it down. I'd go through and want to make sure that I have you know, really good like comparables, opening them up, going through them. Um, you know, if it's a finished basement, can I find one with a finished basement? It's really about making them as close as you can to your comp. But here's another thing. So I've gone through, I'm going to pretend that I picked my five. I'm looking at it. The other thing for me is when you have made your selection, and it still keeps these other ones on here. That makes me absolutely crazy. And I did not know this for a long time, I must confess. Did you know if you hit this checked button, it eliminates all the ones you don't want, and now you have a clear view to just work with the ones you want. Sometimes also maybe uh, something like a school district or um, maybe there's another particular field you kind of want to match them up on to make sure you're getting good quality comps. You can also think of it like an Excel spreadsheet. You can grab those column headings and you can move them into the order so they're really easy to see. Oh yeah, it's the same school district. This is gonna be a good comp. Once you have your comp selected, and this is my favorite part, it's all about finding the easy button. Um, and I'm all about it being a, you know, a mom of a 10 year old who's go, go, go. I need as many easy buttons in my life as possible. So the easy button that I keep referring to is this, it's under, it kind of looks like a plug or actions. And what that is, is it's gonna plug all that information into your report for you. So think of it that way. It's gonna plug you into where you need to go. So click on that actions button, and it's gonna give you three options. One, if you're showing properties, then dropping them into a showing time cart, and Debbie shows that in her class too. It's awesome. That's, a, that's something you definitely wanna know how to do. But in this case, the one we're looking for today is Cloud CMA CMA. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna take all of those great comps, which by the way, you just completed the hardest part of your CMA. Let me go bigger so you can see it there. Um, you just did the hardest part of your CMA. From here, it's now gonna apply the template that we're setting up. So what you have to do at this point is you're gonna follow these four, they're kind of like a wizard. It's gonna walk you through these four tabs. And by the way, the last one isn't even a tab. It's kind of like a save, if you will. But the first thing you have to do is what are you gonna name your report? So I'm gonna call this Sally and Sally, okay? You could put in confidential notes, like you know maybe it was a referral, and it's something that just you are gonna be able to see. But here's another cool improvement that they recently made. It's going to pull from tax information. So when you start typing in the property address of your subject property, which how cool this is. So I start typing in our 41539 Wessel, when you click on that autofill, it's now just filled in the bedrooms, bathrooms, things like square footage a lot of times will be filled in for you. So you can even go in and add in more criteria, but you can see it just filled in the lot size, when it was built, what the taxes are, it's now pulling that right into your, your front subject information. Okay, so here's another little cheat. 
Um, for the cover, if you've never been to the property before, it will do a Google overhead shot. I only have to be honest, I'm not a big fan of that. I think it kind of looks sloppy when you're going into a $400,000 listing. I don't want a Google road shot on the front of my cover. I want it to look a little nicer. So here's a little cheap. What I do, and it's just personal preference, you don't have to do this. I usually, as I mentioned, try to find um, the property in the MLS first. So let's say I went into the BSNA record. I'm just going to grab one here real quick. If you click on that BSNA record, when we opened that up a little bit earlier, um, it has a front elevation photo on there. Now, you can't take photos from the MLS. Remember, those are watermarked and the agent or the photographer who took uh, that picture, they, whoever clicks the shutter, I learned this from Taylor. If you haven't taken Taylor's class, by the way, that's another great one, learning how to take better pictures of your listings. But Taylor taught me whoever actually takes the photo owns the copyright. So when they're put into the MLS, you don't want to take those photos. But there are public record photos like on BSNA and other sites where I want to just basically take this photo and kind of crop it so I have something a little more uh, appealing on the front of my CMA. I don't want that ugly Google Hope overhead shot of just a road, right? So what I recommend doing is if you go to the BSNA record and you click that easy button that I showed you earlier, you can actually click on the photo of the home. You can also do a save image as by simply right clicking on it. So what I generally will do is I will call it front of home. Now this is not something that I would use in the MLS. This is just something that I would use on the front cover of my CMA so I don't have that um, Google overhead shot. So now when you are in your cloud CMA, so I'll just open that back up, kind of bouncing around a little bit. Now when I'm creating my CMA report, I can click add a cover photo and I can literally go right from my desktop and I can pull that photo in. I can even crop it. So, you know, I have, I think I got it right here, front of home. Now I can even go ahead and crop it down because you can see it's kind of got that ugly little date on there. So, you can um, crop it, you can make it smaller. And now I have something that looks a little more appealing right on the front of my cover. So as I mentioned, you're really just following these three easy tabs. It looks like four, but one is really published, just means save. Down here, you can see it's actually doing all the hard work for us. It's actually imported all of those MLS numbers for us. And it doesn't matter whether it's a MLS that, um, uh, let's say it's a my real source listing, that will be there. It could be a real comp listing, that will be there. And through our efforts and data sharing, all of the listings that you pull up, those are automatically brought over. So it doesn't matter what MLS they were listed in, through all of our data sharing efforts, it all ends up being easy and easy for you to bring in with one click. So now there is something called the quick and dirty here at the bottom. I want you to pretend you did not see that. I'm gonna tell you what it's for. It has a cool feature, but it's really not what you wanna do as a professional going on a listing appointment. It's really great for lead generation and capturing, um, you know, kind of using a squeeze page technology. We're gonna cover that in just a couple of moments. But when you're doing an actual CMA, it's really all about getting the right comps to come up with the right number. So I'm gonna follow these tabs by clicking on this green button right here. I'm gonna to go to our next step. Basically that first step was just naming our report, maybe adding a photo, that's all we really have to do. The next step is now taking a look at our map to see where those comparables are coming in from. And now I can actually see all of the comparables that I've brought over. Now the cool thing here is when I went on my first listing appointment, um, I remember my broker saying, Colleen, you gotta get that price down there, get that price down there. And so I had like all my really low comps right in front and I almost didn't get to show my fourth comp because I think I kind of offended the homeowner. So sometimes it's about putting the comps in the right order, right? So you can actually drag these comps and put them in whatever order you want. So if I want maybe my medium priced comp to be the first one they see, I can put them in that order. Couple of cool things they've added too. If you click on this um, check, let's say you got all the way to this point and you're like, you know what, 310, that's just too high. I didn't really mean to use that comp. You can deselect it without having to start all over. Maybe you wanna go in and you wanna see some more about that particular comp. Maybe you wanna look at the MLS photos 
um, and you want to see, did it have a finished basement? Or maybe you wanted to read some of the comments, you can do that from here. There's also a place for positive and negative adjustments. Um, and so maybe your house is the only one that doesn't have a garage. So maybe you want to do a negative adjustment uh, for a property that has a, a garage or doesn't have a garage. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I wish I was like that Joanna Gaines lady who like could walk in a house and say, if you just knock this kitchen wall down and we just do this, it'll get you 15 grand more in your house. I am not that girl. I wish I was. But remember, you have a great tool that allows you to do that. And that's called RPR, the Realtor Property Resource. We have a link to your RPR. Now, RPR is not really provided by your MLS. It's something you get through the National Association of Realtors for being a member. But remember, if you ever wanna take a look at RPR and figure out what a value may be, now, it's not an exact science, but I have to tell you, it's pretty darn good. They have a tool called the Refined Value Model. If you go right under Resources and you go into RPR, which is right here, um, you can actually type in an address. It will give you, see if I can type in here, I'll just show you. I was just going to tell you about it, but I kind of like it. And I think more and more people are really starting to use it. Um, and so I'm just going to show it to you real quick. If you're trying to figure out what a value might be for a garage, or maybe they redid their kitchen, think about it this way. If you redid your kitchen in your home right now, and you took that same amount of money and you redid a kitchen and a home in California, probably the home in California and Malibu is going to be worth a whole lot more, right, from that kitchen remodel than, you know, maybe my home in Richmond. So really what it does is it takes the value and where it's located and it comes up with kind of a, a formula to give you a base price of what something may be used as kind of a positive or negative adjustment. So let me show you. So we're going to use our example, our 41539 Wessel Drive. It's going to pull open another great place to get photos, by the way. You can do um, heat maps to see what's going on in the neighborhood. It'll give you all the property details. This would be another great report. If you wanted to put it in your CMA, you could do that as well. But the tool I'm talking about is this refined value model. So you click on that and basically it's going to give you the property information, but it's going to ask you, the agent, a series of questions. I'm just going to take mine out so I can show it to you again. So under the home improvement, this is where you're going to pick what you did. So let's say the homeowner says, well, Colleen, we put 10 grand into our kitchen. We think we should get an extra $100,000 for our house. <laughs> well, you know, some of them think like that. It's a little bit scary, but it does happen. Um, so the idea is, and Floyd Wickman was a big fan of this. He always said, never, ever tell a seller anything. Um, you are not their friend. You're there for an interview and you show them everything on paper. So if I were to say, well, I know you think it's worth that, but you know, it's really not even that nice of workmanship. I am the bad guy, right? As the agent, I am now telling them that they're wrong. Bad idea. I would much rather on paper show them what NAR says that same remodel is worth or, you know, that negative or positive adjustment on paper. I'm not the bad guy. It's actually a, calcul a calculated formula. So I, as the agent, I'm going to say they did a major kitchen upgrade. It tells you a little bit about what would be considered as a major kitchen upgrade versus maybe a, um, just an updated kitchen. And then obviously the older the work was done, the less it's going to be worth. So it was done 10 years ago. It's not going to be worth if it was done three months ago, right? So I'm going to say that they did it in 2021 in December and they put $10,000 in their kitchen. It's going to now take that information that I've supplied it and it's actually on paper going to allow me to tell them that that home improvement might bring them an additional $5,000. Not an exact science, but more and more people are starting to use this calculation when flipping homes. So it's a really cool tool. Again, you already get it through the National Association of Realtors and RPR, and you'll find it, you'll find that link to RPR right through resources. Thank you. I thought it was getting hot in here. I thought it was just having a hot flash. <laughs> it got really warm there all of a sudden. Okay. Sorry, we're testing out our new hybrid classroom. We have all the doors shut, so it was just getting to be like a Little, little quiet, not a sauna. <laughs> and that if I pass out, do you think they'll notice at home? <laughs> just get prop you up from behind, Colleen. Thank you. 
Um, okay, so that is uh, RPR and where you can find those positive and negative adjustments. Once you've got those adjustments, you can simply just type in what the adjustment is. Uh, maybe you want to type in uh, new windows, new garage, whatever it happens to be, and then the adjustment and save. So pretty easy. Um, I was kind of that agent who also used post-it notes all over because I was afraid to tell them, oh, yeah, well, this comp didn't have a garage. Or you can actually add little notes in, too, right underneath the MLS information. Um, so I can actually go to what's pulled over from the MLS. And I usually put mine in caps. Um, so I can say um, a home was completely remodeled and such and such. So I can still leave my notes in there so that they're visible when I'm presenting to the seller. So there's really nothing, to be totally honest, that you have to do on this second tab. One thing you can do if you want is you can put a price range in, what your suggested price is. Um, so, and sometimes maybe you don't be like me where you walk in that little house and you step on the blue shag carpeting and you're like trying to rip it out of your book. You might want to give yourself a price range if you haven't been in the listing before. So maybe your suggested price is $250 um, to $275. You can actually put that range in. Now, this next thing, um, it's here. I don't use this because I happen to be a huge fan of Transaction Desk. Um, I, we've kept transaction desk because our members tell us that it's, they love it. They don't want to change, um, how they work with their documents. They want it to be quick and easy and what they know when they're ready to write an offer. And so with the transaction desk program, there are net outs that are already calculated for you. So I can put in what the sales price is going to be. I can put in what I'm charging, um, you know, maybe I'm charging X amount of commission uh, and I can figure out the transfer amount. And it calculates all of that for me. You can do that here if you're not using Transaction Desk, but you have to manually do it. Now you can save the items, but you still have to manually go back and compute it. So here's a little tip. If you are like me and you're using Transaction Desk and you love it, save your net sheet as a PDF then just pull that net sheet right into your CMA. You're doing the same thing, but it does all the math for me and I need math help, so that's always good. Um, so remember, if you're doing your net out in Transaction Desk, save it as a PDF, pull it into your CMA. Don't recreate the wheel because it just takes too long, okay? Remember, you can move those listings in any order you want. Really, there's nothing you have to do on that second step. It's really just for you to review as the agent. Third step, and again, you could hit the green button or you could just click on the tag, is really your template. So the first time you're going into Cloud CMA, you do want to make sure you've got the look. I mean, you don't want to show up if you're with, uh, let's say, Century 21. You don't want to show up with the Remax bloom. You know what I mean? It's not so good. You want to actually make sure that you have got all of your colors and your themes set up, saved as your template. So your next CMA, seven minutes, you're out the door. So the themes are really just basically what do you want your colors to be? So I like the modern ones personally because it puts your photo at the bottom and it puts your um, basically a footer at the bottom of each page with your contact information. So I'm a big fan. There are There is every company color, I promise you. Um, and there are themes that you can choose from. If you are with Real Estate One or Remax, a lot of them have actually paid for uh, company sponsors. You'll find yours um, in your cloud account. You can pull from those. So there's a lot of different choices there. The layout refers to how do you want your comps actually laid out? So I prefer the photo with Max data, but there's the photo with map. If you're going to print it, you probably want to do something a little more in lines with the column comparisons. You don't have to print as much. Um, I like this one because I usually present it on my laptop or I will, um, you know, go over it uh, with them or I'll email it to them. So I like the photo with Max Data. It's my personal choice. Um, but if you want to print it, you probably want to go a little bit on the more of the column side. You can also save once you have your report set up. You can save as many templates as you want. Like I have Colleen's awesome CMA package here. I have Colleen's short. If I want to short and sweet, you know, just in and out. Um, I also have a follow-up report. And we're even going to talk a little bit about uh, their new lead generation piece which just needs to be labeled web lead, and that will automatically send it out to clients. I'm going to show you some really cool stuff on that end, too. So keep in mind, really, the template is just how do you want the layout? The first time you come in, they give you everything. So you do want to clean up your template, because otherwise you'll be there six days trying to present your CMA. They kind of give you all the options up front. 
But think of it working this way. Everything that's in your CMA report is right here listed under your CMA report. So everything that's going to show up right now is right here. Everything additional that you could add is just going to be over here to the left. And you just click on it, hit the plus, and it will move it into your report. Now, it always moves it right down to the bottom. But of course, you can grab it and you can drag it anywhere you want it in your report. If you don't like a particular thing, like I don't want this example, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the minus button and it's going to remove it. If you want to see what a particular page looks like, just click on the name of the page and it's automatically uh, going to uh, pull up that page so you can kind of have a quick preview of it. So you can put it in any order you want. There's no set order. The last thing you want to do is you want to pull in your custom pages because remember, all, you know, if you're in my real source member, we all get cloud, right? But the problem is what sets your cloud report, by, what makes yours better than mine? And it's really the homework you're doing, the custom pages you're pulling in, right? So let's take a look at those. Custom pages are always going to be in your cloud right under these custom pages right here. If I click this little arrow, and you can see here some good examples. If I want to add my BSNA record, now there's two steps to this. I'm going to show you how to add it into your CMA, but I'm also going to show you how to add it to cloud so you can use it again and again and again. So bear with me for one second, it'll make sense. So if I want to add the BSNA record to uh, this CMA report, that's something that's really specific to this CMA. I certainly don't want 41539 Wessel Drive in every CMA I do, right? It's only for this specific property. So in order to bring that BSNA record in, I'm going to simply click on the plus, and as you can see, it's now floating into my report, and I can move it wherever I want it to be. Remember, you can also make up your own pages. Um, so that sites, remember I showed you the different uh, sites that it would be on online and how we were going to market their home. Those would be something that I made up specifically, and I can pull those right from my custom pages. You can also do things like stats. Um, I kind of want to show you a really cool stat one that you might want to use. Um, but really, it's just simply clicking the plus and floating it over to the report. I had a kind of a, an interesting situation recently. There was a home in Warren. Um, it was an out of country investor. And this happens to be the home. And uh, he called and he said, you know, I hear things are really selling over there. I've got this house. I've never seen the house, by the way. I bought it with a group of houses and I want to sell it. And I think we should get like record profits, right? So, and I'm all excited because, you know, I haven't seen the house yet either. I'm just talking to him on the phone. Get to the house, unfortunately had no CFO, it had been rented and the renters had pretty much trashed the entire inside. So I thought, now I don't want to tell them. How am I going to tell them? Yeah, everybody's getting record profits. You've never seen this house, but you definitely are not, right? Now I'm the bad guy. So what I did is I actually just went and took pictures of the property. And I added those right to, uh, I actually put them in a Word doc. I pulled the Word doc in to Cloud CMA. It, of course, converted it to a PDF. But now, right in my CMA report, I was able to show them that most of the cupboards were missing. Uh, there was actually water running over uh, an area of the floor. Um, some of the, of the pipes were actually stolen. The house needed a lot of work. But I was able to actually address all of this and show him instead of just telling him. And I just added those pages right to my CMA. So instead of telling him, I could literally show him the condition of the property. Um, one more, other, one other thing that I always add is trying to educate the seller on exactly um, what the market conditions are in that city or in that area. We have a great program uh, right through Paragon if you haven't used it. And by the way, there's a whole class on this, so I don't want to overwhelm you. I know you're probably like, whoa, how am I going to remember this? Um, but there is a whole class on what we call market stats. Um, market stats is where you can literally go in and with one click, you can add a page that tells the homeowner exactly what's going on in their area. So let me show you how that works. Um, you go into resources. And there is under lead gen and social media, there is something called market stats. I love this. I do this for every single CMA that I do because it's great when you are trying to educate a seller on exactly what's going on in their market right now. This is the coolest thing because it's literally two clicks. 
So I went into market stats and right up here at the top, there's a button called fast stats. Fast stats will open up the map and it's literally just clicking on the county or city you want the report for. So let's use Ray. I know Ray was in Sterling Heights for a long time. So I'm just gonna use you and pretend you still are Ray. I don't know if you still are, but we're gonna pretend. I'm gonna literally click on Sterling Heights and it's going to create this graph. Let me just blow it up so you can see it a little better that will show you exactly what's going on in the marketplace right now for Sterling Heights. So let's take a look. Last year on the market in August of 2021, we had 219 homes on the market. This year we're up by 10 homes. We have 229, which gives us a surplus of almost 5%. But let's check out our average sales price. Average sales, sales price is still rising, right? We've still got a few buyers that have not found. They've been looking for so long. We now see our average sales price went from 287 to 319. It actually breaks down homes and condos separately. But as Dave was mentioning at the beginning of our class, really the best thing we can do is hit print, print this as a PDF, save it to our desktop, and now we can pull that into our CMA as well. So we're actually going to do that. We're just going to save it to our desktop and I'll show you exactly how we're going to pull that in. So I showed you how once you get your custom pages into cloud, you can add them into a report. So if they're specific to a specific property, pretty easy. When you're in that page, you're just pulling it in. Um, I'm just kind of refresh on that. So on our CMA page here. If I want my uh, BSNA report, or if I want my market stats, which I just added in, I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to pull those stats over. So I'm going to say I'm just going to pull my market stats in and then I can move it around anywhere I want. But the thing is, you have to get them into cloud. So in order for them to show up on your list, there's one more step. You have to actually pull them into the cloud program and it's super easy to pull in custom pages. You're literally going to go right over here to usually it's a, a picture. If you've set up cloud, it's usually your photo might be an initial if you have not put your photo in and you'll see right under your um, avatar or your initial, you'll see custom pages. This is where you're going to bring in all those custom pages that you want to use for this specific um, CMA. So again, this would be more not so much something you'd want to use every time like my sites where they're going to be marketed or my marketing plan that's in my template because i'm going to use it every single time it's going to be in there but if it's real list records or bsna records those are a one-time use for this cma only so i got to pull them in so in order to do that there's two different ways if they're something like your resume or something you want to create again something you might want to have in there all the time they give you some templates. So if I wanted to create an action plan, a marketing action plan, let's say, there's a template, I can click on the pencil, I can kind of highlight what would be unique to me. You can add links, you can add things like that. But in this case, most of the stuff that I actually use, like the Realist record or the BSNA record, or here's that net sheet I was telling you about, that you can do right in, um, there's the market stats, Here's my net sheet that I actually did right in Transaction Desk. I want to have all of those things in my CMA as part of my CMA. So in order to pull those in, you just go all the way to the bottom. And as you can see, I have quite a few. And you just hit that Upload button. So if I wanted to bring in my market stats, I would click Upload a PDF, go to my desktop, and I'm simply going to find my market stats, or in this case, it was Sterling Heights. I'm going to go ahead, click on it. And as you can see, I'm now bringing the Sterling Heights market stats right into cloud. Now I can just add it into the CMA whenever I'm ready to use it. So there's two different ways that you want to add it. So that's the hardest part of cloud, I think. Some, like your sites, your resume, you want those every time. They're going to be part of your automatic template that you set up. But there's other things like, like what you're seeing here, the realist record, the tax record, market stats for specific properties. Those you're going to upload and then simply move them into your cloud report. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So congratulations. You did all of the hard work. You created your whole CMA. It does auto save. So um, I kind of left there and went into market stats and a few other things. 
So remember, um, it will auto save. It will leave off uh, with the information that you've added. And when I'm ready to finalize it, when I'm ready to make my report all come together, it's that uh, fourth and final step, which is your publish. Don't think of publish as a step. Think of it as any time you make a change. Let's say you spelled your client's name wrong. Let's say you put some wrong information in. You're always going to republish it because that will always pull the latest information up. Then lastly, it takes about 30 seconds to create your report. When I'm ready to take a look at it, the CMAs themselves are always made the same. You make them the exact same way. It's literally how do you want to present your CMA? As I mentioned, I showed you in the beginning that PDF version. This is great if you're going to print it or if you're going to uh, present it. If you click on that view PDF, it's going to be exactly what we looked at in the beginning. As you can see, it's just opening into a PDF. And now that photo that you saw me bring over, that's right here. And I can start going through um, our report. I can go page by page with that seller. But what about that new live version that I told you about? We'll kind of end off here. That new live version is really created the exact same way. It's just how do you want to present it? So if you want to present it in that interactive way, you're sitting with that seller. And you want to use things like the interactive map. Uh, you want the calculations to be done. You want it to be a little more um, kind of a little more next step and interactive. Then you want to hit this view live. OK, so let me kind of show you what that looks like. It's still the same process. Again, you're going to make it the same way in Paragon. Click the easy button, but you can click start presentation and it's going to walk you through a little more interactive way to present it. If you wanted to present this, let's say uh, Ray's in Florida on vacation, his seller is here and he wants to present it via Zoom, maybe Microsoft Teams, via maybe Skype or Screen, which is basically the makers of Slack, if you know anything about Slack, um, or Google Hangouts, you can decide how you want to present it. Okay, so the next thing is, once you decide how you wanna present it, let's go into our comps here. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing just for the sake of time. But in our comps, you can see here's our subject property. We can see this is the closest comp. You can see it's pretty, pretty darn close. You can also see there's additional garage spaces. You'll see if there's additional bedrooms or bathrooms. So it's starting to do a lot of those comparables for you. It's saying that there's more square footage in this house, lot sizes bigger in this house, uh, extra garage space in this house. If you're sitting with the seller and the seller will use the Ray example where Ray actually set his CMA up three days ago and the seller says, well, yesterday, Mr. Schmageggy, he closed on his house. I don't see Mr. Schmageggy's comp in here. Well, you know, maybe Mr. Schmageggy is actually a two story and you're listing a ranch. So maybe you didn't pull it, but you still want to be able to have that conversation with him. Right. So I've already pulled my comps, but I can actually go into my live MLS map. That's exactly what this is. So he says, well, Mr. Schmageggy over here on Hillsdale, how come you didn't include his comp? I can click into that live comp right over here to the left. I can say, oh, well, actually, Mr. Schmageggy is a split level home um, or actually it looks like a tri-level home um, and you are a ranch. So I didn't include it because we're trying to stay as close to your home as possible for comps. But at least it gives me the option to go over it with him before I'd have to say, well, let me check on that. I'll, let me go back to my office or hold on. Let me get an app out of my purse so I can pull up the house. Right now it's right in front of you. If this is a good comp and you're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I didn't see it because I did this two days ago and you're right. It closed yesterday. I can click that toggle and immediately include that comp now in my report. Now, when I go to my comparables. This Hillsdale is now included in my comparable report. So if I slide over here, Hillsdale is now one of my options. So the idea is it gives you a live interactive map um, that you can even pull up and review things on the side. All right, so I know I covered a lot of information. Um, I kind of bounced you around a little bit, but the good news is we recorded this class. And thank you for being so patient today while we got everything working in our hybrid classroom. 
uh, we recorded this. So as you start doing a CMA, if you get uh, kind of like, oh, how did that lady with the fuzzy hair get to that refined value thing? You can actually just go right to our YouTube channel and you can watch all of our classes. So if you need to see something again, it's there for you. Um, Debbie's done a great job of also creating cheat sheets in Paragon. So let me show you where you can find all these help tutorials. Um, in our resources, first, you will find over here under education that there are recorded webinars. If you click on recorded webinars, it will take you right to our YouTube channel. If you click on playlists, you can find all of the cloud CMA classes that were taught. So just scroll on down. And Debbie's done a great job of getting them all organized and put up together. Um, there's creating CMAs, cloud CMA. Um, there's pretty much, I think, what do we have in here? A couple hundred classes now? Oh, I'm, I don't know how what our total number is, but that sounds about right. <laughs> but there's a lot. I think uh, easily. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can go right to, again, right under resources, because we don't even have to even write it down. You can go right under your resources, right under education, recorded webinars. You can also sign up for future uh, online classes, and um, so it makes it really easy. Debbie's also created a great cheat sheet library. Um, I personally, when I'm frustrated, I can't do cheat sheets because I'm already frustrated. So I need a video. I'm kind of a video girl. Uh, Debbie has done a great job with the quick tips videos. Um, you know, I think she's got, how many do you have now? 61. 61 yeah. little, you know, there's three and four minutes on, did you know you could do this? Or did you know this is faster? They're, they're really cool. So those are in the YouTube library too. But under MLS documents, if you are a reader and you don't want to do the, you know, videos and you just want something you can look at, there is an education folder. We call it handouts and cheat sheets right underneath. So if you wanted to go into, let's say you had a question about cloud CMA, you could literally just type in the word cloud and all of the cheat sheets for cloud CMA will pop right up. Click on it, you can open it, you can print it, and it will walk you through whatever that particular item is. All right. Okay, and I see some blinking lights. So let's see if we have any questions. Debbie, did we have any questions from before? Oh, actually, yeah. Okay. One, there was, when will this webinar be posted? That is a really good question. So I'm teaching from nine to 12 tomorrow. So sometimes after that, I will check my email, then edit this and hopefully at the earliest by the end of the day tomorrow. That is the earliest, if nothing goes wrong. Okay. Yep. If so I, I saw a good question in here. Um, can you explain where the Google guy was that you oh, yeah. Dragged out onto your map. Absolutely, he is basically in the map, and you can use him on any any time you're using the map screen. So let me go back there one more time. So I went into my searching. We were trying to find our comps. Uh, wanted to know how to use the Google Man, and you can do it on your own home. This is a great way to see, um, you know, kind of even your own neighborhood from a bird's eye view. Just click into your map field. And all you have to do is the Google Man, and I apologize, you probably didn't see it because it's over on the right-hand side. Sometimes GoToWebinar does cover that, but he's a little yellow Google guy over to the right. And all you're gonna do is you're literally going to um, hold down your mouse, drag him on your map where you want to set him, and you literally can walk down the road. You can see the house to the left, you can see the house to the right, and you can do a completely 360 view. You can go all the way around. Um, so really easy way to tour the uh, neighborhood. So thanks for that great question. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, I was talking to Brian. Oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> um, great information. Thank you so much. Thank you for being present, and thank you for being our, uh, our, uh, our test class today. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Again, if you would like to unmute your mic, you all have the ability to unmute your mic and ask a question um, or provide any feedback. We're, we love that, too. So if you want to unmute your mic, you're welcome to do so. I can't really see. The only thing I noticed, I can't really see the people's. Oh, so yeah? I have to go this way. <laughs> any questions? Yes, Colleen. Hey. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being my example so much today. Uh, hey, Colleen. Quick question. At the onset, you talked about dissimilar architectures. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, will Cloud CMA do a um, 
will allow variances for dissimilar architectures, such as the tri-level you talked about in the midst of all those ranches, such as the appraisers do? Will they, will Cloud CMA do that in the program or not? Great question. It doesn't, um, that I would do more on the Paragon side, quite honestly, because when I when I would be doing a CMA, I would probably, if I was listing a tri-level, I would want to search and try to find a tri-level. If I could not, then, um, then I would probably have to open up to all styles. So I would try to always do it by structure style first. So if you're listing a tri-level, I would want to put in that it's a tri-level. Um, if I couldn't find anything, then you may have to go do the, an adjustment. But no, it doesn't do that automatically. That's one of those adjustments you'd have to figure out. Okay, great, great class. I've got two CMAs to do this week, by the way. I love it. That's great. Well, I want to see two new listings from you then next week. I'm excited. <laughs> we need right, the inventory. <laughs> well, good luck. Thanks. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thanks everybody for being our test in-house audience and our test uh, webinar audience. Um, so thank you. If you do have any questions, uh, you'll have a follow-up email. And I think we're still doing follow-up surveys, right? Are we still doing the surveys? Yes, that is automatically so, on the system. All right, so you'll get a survey. Let us know what you thought. And uh, again, thanks for being our test today. Have a great day. Happy selling, everybody. Great job. Bye, guys. Thank you.